Hello everybody and welcome to Adobe Live. We would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land in which we are creating and streaming from today and pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. My name is Flynn, I'm hosting today and I'm here with logo designer originally from the UK on the Gold Coast, James Barnard. Hey James. Hello Flynn, thank you for having me back for part two of two. Uh, looking forward to getting cracking. Looking forward to getting cracking. Let's get into it quick. We don't have that much time. Right, um, right, right. <laughs> just before we do, what's up, everybody uh, in chat? If you're on Behance or YouTube, uh, throw your comments and questions and feedback and whatever you want um, down there. We're all hanging out today and we're here to help as well. So there were lots of little things that James did as he was going along that I, I caught up and I was like, dude, how did you do that? Um, and also chat had a lot of questions too. So don't hesitate. We'd love to hear from you. Let us know. But should we start with a bit of a recap? And I'll share your screen and we'll get we'll just get to it. Go ahead. Yeah, lots to get through today. Um, so last time on episode one, we created this um, exercise to exercise um, badge mockup. I wasn't sure whether I was going to make this into a full logo or just do a t-shirt design, but I've decided we're going to make this into a full-on fake brand. Okay, so we're going to take this and we're going to roll out a couple of options of this logo and we're going to put it into a client presentation, including a few mockups to sort of show how I would present this to a client if I was going to um, you know, you actually create a brand out of this. Um, so we got to this point where we made um, a kettlebell icon incorporating a demon's face and we used the handle of the kettlebell to create some horns and then we wrapped that up in a piece of type and put a little dumbbell on the bottom. Um, I did a little bit of work behind the scenes on this just to kind of clean a couple of things up. I just made the teeth a little bit more wobbly and mm. a bit more, you know, crazy it was looking a bit too uniform for me i made those eyes a little bit smaller and um simplified them up a little bit so they were less kind of confused looking and more kind of uh you know just a little bit less um look like he didn't know what was going on so um it's a little bit cleaner we've still got our, our texture in the background and we used a um transparency uh, wind window to do that. So that's actually a JPEG behind the design. So we'll need to clean that up and we'll actually need to turn this into a vector before we go ahead and use this um, in our presentation. Um, so before we do that, we're going to make a version of this uh, to be used. We need to create a few versions of this logo. Okay. So we need, we've got this lovely round one, which is good for when the design's nice and big. So this one would work really well on a t shirt. We don't have options that would work well in a more sort of uh, in, in a position where the horizontal space is limited. So things like the um, website navigation and the header of a website. Um, so we better just, you know, create a version of this that will work well there. And then we can upload those into our, um, into a, the Adobe libraries. And then we'll use that to pull the design through into different software applications like Photoshop and InDesign. Yeah, okay. Cool. So let's first of all, um, take the, um, Oh, I've gone into the uh, wrong layer, so I'm in my transparency window. I just need to get this design and clean it up a little bit. Now, I've already actually done this, but let me show you how I got to this point. Okay, so we've got a, a version that has these speckles in there. And I basically just expanded that to um, create a vectorized version. So there's lots and lots of detail going on in here. So this version will be fine when we print this up into, into larger scale formats. But when we use this on something that's a little bit smaller, those details is just way too much and we probably don't want to do that especially when we're printing you know cutting this into maybe um using a laser to cut this into something or um printing into you know on as a stitch in wool this kind of stuff wouldn't work so we need to keep a version that's um sort of without that grain in it right so, so you just don't also, want like that information isn't going to show but it might also i guess keep the file too large or it might confuse the process like depending on what yeah. you're doing is that why that's it that's yeah. right yeah like if, if you were to if you were to put that into uh, a cricket machine for instance to cut that into vinyl to then put onto a t-shirt you would have to pull every single one of those little holes out of the vinyl uh using a little weeding tool oh yeah no one's got time uh, so that's that. just a, that, exactly that's just an example of where this design wouldn't make sense so we do need a version that is um, nice and clean um Okay, so let's just take our um, icon here. We're going to paste it down next to our type. In our transparency panel, I'm just going to uh, release that JPEG from the design and delete it out of the way. So we've got our nice clean one. We don't need our dumbbell on this version. That's just for the badge lockup. So this is now one shape. I'm just going to unite that just to make sure that we're working with one shape. So that when I click and drag, it's not going to move anywhere. Now I've got our type here and we want to basically create a version that 
is um, that's going to work alongside the the logo mark. Okay, so I want to, I don't want to have an option which is really long like this because if we create a version that's portrait, that type is way too wide, meaning that when we shrink this down, uh, that it's not going to be legible anymore. The, mm -hmm. Ideally, we want to create a, a lockup of this type that is as thin as possible, uh, so that it can be read as small as possible um, in our different sort of um, different design mediums. Right. So I'm going to duplicate this type and I'm going to outline it immediately because it's <laughs> probably a terrible way to work, but it's so much easier to manipulate type once it's turned into a shape. Um, that's just me. Don't follow my advice on that. Actually, do you know what? I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do that. Let's just go back to our, our actual type and I'm going to create a stacked version of this. Um, I'm just going to pull the two out of that by cutting it and then just pasting it back. So this is all still live type. If we go to outline mode, it's still dark, meaning it's live. I'm going to put this onto a new layer. And um, what I was thinking was if we... I like the fact that these two um, words line up underneath each other. And it's only the only difference is those two letters. Mm -hmm. So if we do something like this, if I bring up my um, character panel and we just decrease the we want to sort of squash the um the type vertically i'm going to bring that just a little bit we could probably do this a little bit better um with the uh, afterwards by outlining this but i'm just going to use the, the the little squash tool on the baseline shift and move that one to the top we're going to do the same percentage squish on the zero and that one will go from the bottom and let's just see if our two fits nicely in here. I think that would be quite a cool way to treat this type. You can kind of get away with it as well because of the, the wobbliness of the type. Like it's a bit exactly. like kind of, it's almost not hand painted. Hand painted is the wrong word, but it's it's a bit like wacky. If you were sitting there with like a, I don't know, sans serif font or something, it was quite elegant. Be, might not make a lot of sense to kind of squeeze and shove that in, but it kind of works. That's right, it does. Um, yeah, you're right. I think it's like because it's got it's got that hand drawn feel to it. Mm. it, it the fact that it's not perfect kind of allows this one to, to sort of work. So I don't know if you just saw what I was doing there. Um, I didn't like the fact that once we did that change, the um, type didn't line up. The E and the R there didn't line up. So all I did was I put a space in between that word, highlighted that space, and then tracked it back so that it was um, aligned to the left hand side. So there's actually a little space after the E there. Um, and that means that the type is still live, but now we've got a, a lovely little bit of breathing room in there. And what we could also do is just take that E and um, stretch it out just a little bit so that it's kind of the same width as the O. And then we'll just track our little space back again. There we go. So that's quite a cool little um, playful way to, to treat that type. I think that's. Yeah. Yeah, totally we won't spend, too, won't spend too long on that. It's quite nice. I like that. Uh, um, so just before we move on, just have a quick question from Alessandra in chat. Um, mm -hmm. James, has there been a brand you worked on that seemed like it was going smooth all the way and then you encountered a bumper and how did you manage it? So everything's uh, going great and then something happens, external force, I don't know, something, it just wasn't working anymore. Can you get, the, you don't have to yeah, be specific. The, but. the external force is usually the client. <laughs> when they I was don't trying, like I was trying to be do. polite. I was, I was Yeah, avoiding. you can say it. You can say it. Uh, yeah, clients, they get annoyed all the time. No, no, no. If you've done the, 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 the legwork at the beginning of a project and, um, you know, briefed them properly or they've briefed you properly and you've asked the right questions, then you shouldn't run into too many um, problems. There are times, obviously, when clients just don't like what you're doing uh, or don't like the work that you present in your first round and those are tricky because um I, you know i normally at the start of a project i'll give them two versions to choose from if they don't like either either of them i kind of have to go back to the drawing board a little bit and mm. it doesn't happen very often but it does happen but it's important that you as a designer be allowed to you know test out your creative freedom um and take their brief and, and do what you want with it now, when they don't like that work, you then have to kind of go back to the drawing board a little bit. And then at that point, you need to get really, really clear on the next steps moving forward. So this happened to me recently with a, with a job where the client just really didn't like what I was what, what I presented. Um, they liked it sort of stylistically and it worked for them, but the concept wasn't quite right. And the concept is something that I came up with. Um, and so we went kind of back to the drawing board 
but then in the next stage of the project um we got really specific on the next sort of kind of route to take mm. uh, and that meant that you know we were kind of aligned going um forward and they and what we did was we used one of the two rounds of amends that i agreed uh to take to redo um the logo and then they only had one round of amend in the end to bring that to conclusion and luckily it worked but yeah it's always, it's always the clients that kind of is, is the big <laughs> curl, isn't it? okay sorry so we, we kind of need to move a bit quick here yep, so no um what i did here was i basically as a good rule of thumb in logo design three widths of your logo apart uh versus your type is a good sort of starting point as a, as a design sort of rule of thumb so this is uh what we're going to do for this like and if i just copy these down that's the kind of port portrait one we can use and then this would be one that we might want to use in our website navigation so a portrait and a landscape version i'm liking this it's it's kind of always a good idea to keep everything um keep the ratios the same from from those two options and also if you're being really picky and pedantic you can use i do this all the time take one of the letters and use that as a spacing between your right. um points so that you kind of got some sort of reference when you resize this logo or you move it into different positions uh to make sure that the you know, you're kind of keeping things as even as possible and the, and the space of wide letters like m's and w's work really well for this because it's kind of like the the x width of the character is a kind of like a, a proportion of the type that you can use to kind of space your design and look at that it just works really nicely as a um mm. as a space i'm going to nudge this down just a smidge because the, the bottom of this logo is weighted quite heavily there's quite a lot of um surface area of the logo is um on the bottom of the design so if we just use the vertical um, align tool to align that it optically kind of feels that the text is a little bit too far to the top so i'm just just a couple of pixels just going to move that down so the I think that's a really feels... important one to for, for people to realize as well because like so often you'll see like reviews of people on the internet sort of saying uh, it's not actually perfectly aligned it's like yes but it's optically aligned yeah there's, there's, absolutely there's a big right. difference true very true indeed yeah it's it's there's a big difference between i did a post about this recently called about bottom weighting and right. seeing um you know vertically you often things that are that are actually aligned absolutely dead center on the vertical of, often appear too low mm. so you have to put them up a little bit um it's a, it's a technique technique used in picture framing um it's a really kind of it's just basically just go by what looks the best is the is the main sort of you know rule of thumb there yeah okay we can delete these out of the way we've got our two options um to use up top and bottom i think i'm just going to put this um i'm happy with this one so i want to group that together now i like to work with adobe libraries when i do my designs because it allows me to translate this design across different um, softwares like photoshop and indesign so i can pull what i've done into those three different softwares uh, even premiere pro and, and after effects as well if i want to use a logo in a video i'll have that as a resource here so i'm just going to do it and i'll show you what how this works um when it kind of filters down into our, our process so um if i create a new library and then I'll just press this plus button here and, and upload the graphic. That will put our landscape. I'm just gonna call this 001 logo landscape. Okay, and I've grouped these into the little sections here. So we've got our logos, we've got our colors. Uh, so if you wanna put a color through, let's say I want to pull white into the design, I just eyedropper onto the background, press this little button here, add fill color, drag that up and now I've got the, our brand colors kind of in this library and I can use these colors across um, you know the different design software there's one other thing I want to do before we move on to the actual client presentation is we need an inverted option of this logo we need a version that works on a dark background because we've only got one that works on light in dark at the minute and that's no good so I'm going to do this with our um, think I'll do this with this version so if i'm just going to drag this over to the dark background here and we'll just make everything our red color now because it's in our um libraries panel i just have to click that button there and it changes it automatically easy. in the design easy peasy now there's some have you ever heard of the irradiation illusion flint no you never heard of the never irradiation heard of illusion. Where have you been all your life? <laughs> uh, the, irradiation, radi the irradiation illusion is when um, 
when designs are inverted or flipped from black, black and white, white often appears more bloated than black does uh, in the same kind of um, scenario. If I could just Google that, actually, there's probably a really good example of the radiation illusion. Isn't that funny? Um, no, I've never heard of that. There's a really famous... Um, there we go. This one here. Okay. So you see how right. the... Um, the lines in this design appear like they're fatter or they feel like these lines are sort of squishing mm. because the, the the white is actually feels more bloated than black even though it's exactly the same sort of area width so when you invert a logo like this straight into a, you know a light color on dark the text looks fat the eyes look smaller the mouth looks more closed so you have to treat it a little bit to um make it work on black. Now there's a really quick way to do this. Um, the, the fastest way to, to sort of fix this if you're, if you're working on the fly is to add a stroke width to your design and then just bump that stroke up until you're happy with the um, look and feel of it. Now obviously we've done it, it's a bit overkill on our teeth there. It doesn't have to be across the whole design but just by bumping the stroke weight up, stroke weight up just a little bit you can then um, thin that design out just a little bit. I'm going to release the um, texture on this so just we can work with the vector. So that's that's gone across on the dumbbell. We may even want to do it on our type as well, just to kind of thin that type out slightly. Although it, it does look quite nice. It's just when you compare it to the dark version, top and bottom there, mm. um, it's, it is looking a little bit too fat. So if I just highlight our type, group that together. Group, and then we're just going to add a stroke. There we go. If we, by the way, so if I'm adding the stroke to this, but I can't see the changes that it's making because of all of the blue transform handles around the design. Just press Command H to hide those, um, and then you can make your sort of stroke changes. And then you can actually see what's going on. So I'm just going to make that a real sort of hairline stroke. So that's that's okay. So. Um, what I might do is um, I'm going to take the stroke off this. Right, I'm going to use the ungroup those two. I'm going to use the shape builder tool to actually make shapes of those internal sections. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five. Oh, there's an extra one there. Let's see, so that that mouth isn't quite connected. There we go. There we go. And then we can ungroup those, select our mouth and our, our nose. These were these were cut out from the original, That's right. right? Like kind of punching now, through. Now, so now they're actually they're actually made as shapes. So I can treat the the irradiation illusion problem differently uh, to the to the outside of the design. So if I just Command X to cut that away. I'm going to use the Shape Builder tool to fill that slot up, fill out those those options, and now I can paste Apple F those back over the top and make them blue. Uh, sort of shape is back, and now I can put a stroke onto the background kettlebell without affecting the inside of that design. Hmm. Do the same again. I'm just going to bump that up by one. I'm sitting here in silence, um, ladies and gentlemen, because in all my years I've never heard of this and never seen this done in an invert. So um, we play a game here on Adobe Live that every time uh, James comes on, I learn something new about <laughs> branding in <laughs> Adobe Illustrator, and it's like my my safe little spot. So yeah, I'm loving it. This is great. I hope you guys are enjoying this. This is super cool Good stuff. Okay, so we've got a version of the inverted one that's that's not as quite as bloated. The type is. Um, you know, a little bit thinner, and I think maybe we could just bump the eyes alone up a little bit because they're looking a little bit more narrow than the one at the top. It's not a huge difference, but it's going to bother me. The mouth is fine. I think maybe we could do the nose as well, and we'll just eye dropper that as well. And that problem we had last time on Thursday is occurring again, where we're getting these little jutted extrusions because the stroke isn't with a rounded corner, we'll just press that and it'll fix that as well. Mm. Okay, now this is looking great. 
but as a vector it's useless because we've got strokes around the whole thing um so if i drag this over white for instance we've got problems here so we've got we need this to all be in one color and we've got little um problems with the type we've got a blue border around the type which will be useless when we actually put this into um a actual design so we need to cut those changes away to make one vector so the easiest way to do that is to expand the shape so object expand to your fills and strokes and now that's actually a hardened stroke around the edge of the design mm -hmm. i can press shift and m and holding down option i can now cut that away from my design and oh, i'm zooming the wrong way sorry there we go now that change has been actually removed from the design is that shape so builder that, tool that, coming in handy once more absolutely and because these are really these just need to be cut from the um, background we expand those again i'm going to use my special button this time on my keyboard unite those and now i can chop those away using the shape builder tool from the design so uh, option shift and m and then option to remove that one that one that one that one and that one okay we just need to do that a couple more times across our type expand shift and m option remove this might take just a smidge longer but we can do it quickly expand shift and m and we're just going to remove those blue sections uh, i should have ungrouped these before i did it you see how it's taking a long time to do each one because it's a grouped shape and, and that um, shape builder tool is applying the effect to the entire of the type so it's like going to each take individual a letter yeah and it, it applies to the it, it thinks the whole thing is one graphic so it has, has a bit of trouble um doing it fast so you just ungroup them do them one at a time oops press the wrong button there that's gonna screw us up that's very cool so you learn something new every day that's what we're talking about on uh, okay. on, on tuesday stream just watching another creative design use use the software talk about their process talk about different way they used to do things ways they used to do them now it's um it's the magic stuff is always this behind the scenes thing it's not necessarily the branding itself although it's very cool to watch it's these little yeah. these little things um the pop up right. as we're going along a couple of people in chat um tom saying i've noticed this effect before but never knew what it was called um johanna saying me this whole stream wait you can do that <laughs> and jeff <laughs> loving this demonstration thanks yeah super cool um good stuff yeah all right keep ask some questions while i'm doing this because this is just a little bit of uh you know laborious stuff i've got to work through i'll go as fast as i can um but yeah if you've got any questions while i'm doing this then far away um in a minute we're going to take this into a brand presentation and i'll show you how i actually present this to a client mm. very cool i'm also wondering chat as well like how you present to clients like if if you do if that's something that that you're doing at the moment like at your stage in your career or if there's any particular questions you might have about presenting um I well, know, we can we can kick yeah. off a discussion about this because there's there's a couple of schools of thought on how to present to clients mm -hmm. a lot of people swear by getting on the phone or, or getting in front of a client to present your designs in person or over the phone at least so that you can rationalize your design and, and talk through the processes that you went through and the reasons why you got to this final logo yeah some people like me prefer to just present over email and there's a few reasons for this okay because i found that it actually um so just before i answer that question so uh, i'm just going to put this um inverted version into our libraries panel just by adding that graphic i'm going to rename that 001 inverted uh yeah so when i present to a client i actually do it via email because I found that it leads to better feedback. So if you're on the phone with a client and you present them an option and they don't like it, and you're sitting there staring at their reaction, waiting for them to, <laughs> you know, and they're like sort of cringing, it's uncomfortable for everybody. Uh, I found that by just, as long as my presentation is good enough and I've done all of my rationale and I've explained everything inside the actual presentation itself, and the presentation is premium enough and has lots and lots of mock-ups, then the, the feedback is better because it allows the client to sleep on it, to actually, you know, let that design sink in for a couple of days. Because, you know, 
the graphic like logo design especially it's it's changed and people don't respond well to change um and also you're, you're branding their baby you're branding their company they need to have a little bit of time for that design just to sink in and actually think whether or not actually this could work for my company and sometimes that takes a couple of sleeps sometimes it takes a week so there's no pressure from my side with the client in order in terms of actually you know coming back to me with feedback i like to just let the client um sit with it so yeah and by and by doing a good presentation that actually um you know helps that process as long as the presentation is good though it doesn't work if you email them over a jpeg um, right. so here you go what do you think uh, it has to be presented well and that's really this is, this is a really important step you'll see my presentations in a minute um and why it works because i put a lot of time into my presentation okay we've got our logos inside uh adobe libraries now here's one I prepared earlier in InDesign. I have this is my client um, presentation template. It's pretty um, bog standard for all my clients. It includes um, variations of the logo and lots of mockups of the logo of the logo being used in situations that I think will be appropriate for that client. Okay, right. So there's so a, bit, there'll be a little bit of mockups depending on the on the client. Yeah, yeah, and obviously the rationale and the over, the overview of the project. The overview basically says that here's here's some concepts for the logo based off of the discussions that we've had in our briefing call. If it was an in depth discussion and a really really involved one, I might remind the client here about some of the decisions that we that we decided upon. Right. Um, because this is a fake client, I haven't bothered with that step. Do you I mind zooming in just one one yep. little? Of course. Tick? Yeah. yeah. So it's yeah, just an right. overview. Um, and it gives them a, a, a overview on the process. So after initial review, we will refine this design into a finished product using a maximum of two rounds of amends. So they're clear, on, you know, clear at the start of the project what's going to happen in the next phases. Once they finalised it, here are the file formats that you'll get and anything, any supplementary stuff depending on the deal that that client has um, agreed upon. Okay. One other thing I do, this is the rationale page. Okay, so I often like to break out the design or, or the etymology of the design into these little steps so they can see how a logo was formed and, and how it's sort of made up. So in this option, I've just, in Illustrator, um, done an icon of the kettlebell, um, shown the demon design and, and then shown how we've um, incorporated those two together. Now on the left hand side is my rationale for the project. Now it's not overkill. I haven't written paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs of explanation. I found that this this amount of copy is just about enough for them to kind of take it. You don't need to over explain it. It's a it's a demon inside a kettlebell. You know what it is. But <laughs> you know it, it's it's basically explaining about why it's a certain color, why um, it's the thickness it is, the typeface that I've used and why I've used that typeface. Um, so you'll see on the left hand side here it's just a, a few little lines about what they can expect in the rest of the presentation why i've gone down this route the font the style that we've chosen and why i've chosen that font and a couple of little points to sort of rationalize a few decisions um you know why this will work well as a social media profile for instance why this would work well on clothing that kind of thing so i present this in a in a, in a, in a very specific order okay so it starts off with logo concept one Okay, now the first thing I do is give them an example of the logo um, drunk on negative space, okay, surrounded by uh, as much clear space as possible. So they're just looking at the design in full. So inside my libraries panel in InDesign, I can now drag this into my um, document. We can center align this to the page and we can just resize it a bit and make it nice and spacious. So this is the first thing that they're going to look at. It's in its colors. It's as simple as possible, and then um, you know there's no sort of no sort of hiding behind the design. It's as bare as it can be on this page. Okay, the second page of the design is a mock-up. Now, usually it's in a mock-up of something like a business card, especially like a corporate client. Who want, it's the only place that really they're going to have this printed. Mm -hmm. um, it might be a business card. Let's say that we're, we're going to use this for a gym brand. I'm going to mock this up onto this wall and onto this punching bag and this is for two reasons this will show that what the logo work looks like um when it's printed up or used on any merch we might be able to do one version that's inverted and one version that's in the darker color that we used the first off so um how often what, have you done mock-ups uh, onto punching bags once before once, once before <laughs> yes <laughs> i did i did a, i did a um, mock-up for a um personal trainer and they were branding their own gym so there yeah. you go uh, yeah, no, it's quite a handy one. Okay, so 
in our uh, links panel, this this document is a Photoshop document. It's just a JPEG. So we're going to work on um, mocking this logo up onto the background of this wall and as a um, punching bag. Okay, so if we right click on our links panel and go edit original, this will open up Photoshop and it'll open up that file. So that when I make changes to this and I save it, it'll pull through into InDesign. As before, in our libraries panel, in Photoshop, we can now pull that design through onto our canvas. So if I do the, let's do the um, punching bag first. So I'm gonna drag our iconized version of this over to the design. I'm gonna put it in place as best as I can. It's quite dark, this image, isn't it? Actually, I might do the inverted version of that. Oh, we didn't up upload our inverted option. So I'm just going to go back to um, Illustrator, select the icon only from this uh, inverted option that we did, add that as a graphic. 001 logo mark inverted. It looks like we've got a couple of questions to get to, but I think we'll get through this first mock up first. And then mm -hmm. when we get, when maybe when we finish the mock up, I'll, I'll ask some of these questions before right. we move on. Yeah. So immediately you'll see that inverted version has now appeared in our um, libraries panel. Now, a great thing, I've already placed this dark version. So I can just right click on that 001 logo mark, do relink to library graphic, select the one that you want to replace it with, and press relink, and I'll swap it out. Now, also, we want a white version of this. So I'm just going to apply a color overlay to this. Um, white option it's already automatically chosen white and i'm going to make that smart object so that, that color overlay is applied um to the let to the layer and it's not an actual additional effect which means that now i can add um a blend mode something like soft light usually works pretty well here see how it pulls through the texture of that punching bag a mm. um, little bit hard to see on there but it's, get, it's getting some of the ripples come through now obviously that's that's not that out quite a lot but when you use blend modes you can just duplicate the number of layers so if i press apple j maybe a couple of times. It just brings it up a little bit. I might just do one, actually. I think that's enough. Mm. So there we go. We've got our, our logo in the right place. I might just make it a little bit smaller. It's a bit in your face. Um, it's a great cool. idea for a punching bag, just like something to aim yeah. for. As well. Hit the demon. Exercise yeah. that demon out by smacking <laughs> it. Uh, okay, so our background, we can put on our um, bigger uh, inverted option. We'll just do a... We'll stick that right in the middle of the design. Actually, let's just check in design and see where this is. Okay, so if I put it in between these two squares, that's pretty much the center of the um, design. And let's use uh, overlay on this one, a blend mode. So it's come through quite dark and then... Yeah, it has. Yeah, it has. Yeah. Uh, maybe let's try a different blend mode. That's interesting because that was multiply, wasn't it? And I think when you duplicated it, it kind of affected the color quite a bit. So it's yeah, multi multiply. So multiply removes white from a design. That's in in this bracket here, darken to darken color. That's all about a minute removing white, and I like showed through. Lighten is about removing dark. So um, I think that's right. Anyway, that's me. It's been a while since I've done this. Um, let's try color dodge coming through okay and it's showing that at least showing the texture behind the wall mm. um but the colors are kind of blown out a little bit but we, we probably don't have time to tweak this too much now but it's um you could then apply a, a sort of hue and saturation layer to that to try and tweak the colors back to where they were um let's just do overlay and we'll actually we'll do it in white as well the so color overlay white smart object We'll do overlay. Well, that's better. That looks cool. Double that up. There we go. That's much better. Um, so, yeah. Great. Now we press Apple S to save that. Go back to InDesign. You'll see that automatically updates. That's so awesome. There we go. There's our first presentation uh, mock up. That's like that process okay. as well, just for simplifying everything. Like, you get, get the mock ups that you want, put them in InDesign first, and then go through into InDesign and just double click mm -hmm. into them to to edit in Photoshop and you just know that the layout's all there. It's just That's a nice it. way to manage the file Beautiful. process, I think. Um, um, should I ask some of these questions just real quick? We'll do quick, yep, go quick ahead. answers. Um, Tom says, you mentioned you present two options to a client. How many different concepts do you explore before deciding on the final two? Oh, oh, 
It depends. <laughs> loads. Absolutely loads. So I'll, I might, if we have time, I might show you one of my Illustrator files and they are just a shambles. There's like 42 artboards in there with, you know, loads and loads of variations. And like I was saying on Tuesday, you know, vectors are free. Um, so it's a case of um, just duplicating and moving on to the next one until you're happy with the uh, the design. But yeah, it is a lot. It is a lot. I will say that. Cool. Um I'll move on to the next one. Um, how many colors would you um, advise when creating a brand? Ooh. Uh, you want a color palette of at least two. Um, I don't think you need to do much more than that. Um, because it kind of it muddies things a little bit. Two just gives you a bit of breathing room and allows to, to create versions that work on light and dark backgrounds. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm just creating an inverted version of the um, the landscape version because I forgot to do that using our logo mark that we used for uh, the inverted option for number one. Sorry, colors. Yeah, yeah, two colors to start off with. Um, like so, for instance, here we've done blue and red because it gives us an inverted option of each. But it yeah. it depends on the style of the design. I recently did one where I'm using a gradient, and then I'm doing inverted options of that. So there's, it could be a few different options in there. But two is a pretty good sort of starting point. Cool. Okay, so this next page in the presentation is showing the logo suite and the colors that we're you know we're going to be using. So I've done my options in. Um, dark and light so we can bring those into the design uh, from the Adobe Libraries panel selecting them both hit um, horizontal align and vertical align press E to transform I'm going to bring those down that way these two options are um, the, the same size on both of these little grid squares so if I select this move this to the back the blue one shows through we can drag that down there we go. Nice. And now I'm going to pull the uh, the landscape variation. We've got a wider slot for this. So this basically showing to the client, look, you don't just get one logo. You get, you know, six or four or four <laughs> or six. At, look at all this value. Added value. Exactly right. So we've got versions that work in different designed mediums. And it just showcases that you've got, you thought about the fact that this logo isn't just going to be used in one place. We've got options here and these are all for you. So yeah, so there we go. So we've got our a sort of a logo suite in there. The next slide I do is the one color option, and it's basically just the black and white versions that will sit over the top of here. So we can do that um, quite quickly. I might just do the logo mark for this page, simplify things a little bit. Oh, sorry, wrong one. We've got our red one and our blue one. Ungroup that. Get rid of that. And I'm just going to paste this into InDesign as an EPS. Uh, rather than having to upload um, to the libraries again. Yeah, but you would normally upload everything I to would. libraries. Yeah, yep. I yep. would. Yep. Just yep. for our live it. limited amount of That's time right. today. Yep. It's going quite quickly, isn't it? And I'll paste the uh, red one in as an EPS2. Really easy. Um, and then we'll make this one white. Oh, I outlined the stroke, not the fill. Make that paper. Put that over here and make this one black registration black so that they know that it works in one color and we talked a bit about registration black um in the previous episode in the episode yesterday so if you guys are interested in mm -hmm. a little bit more in-depth look into color and and blacks and things within branding go check out um part one yep. of this series cool so, all right. So then we've got basically we've, we've shown them all of the options of the logo that they'll have available. We've got a badge version, we've got a landscape version, we've got our logo mark, and it's one color variants. Now we need to show the client how this logo is going to be used in the real world. So I've, I've pre-prepared a mock-up here. So this is an example that you might do as a, a sticker, uh, especially if they're a gym and you know they're, they're doing a bit of merch print. I've got a, a lovely little template for that. I made this one just by masking out that thumb and and putting a smart object into that um, Mac. Mm -hmm. Um, now, here are some that I haven't made up. Now, so, now obviously, we've got a lot of um, templates that you can work from. You can get them all, from all sorts of places, you know, Creative Market, Adobe Stock. Um, this one I made myself. So I found I found an image of a, of a picture, but I've, I've, I've demoed how a homepage website might look. Uh, so I'm just going to edit original on this and go into Photoshop. 
and we can put that la that landscape design into this uh, website header to show that that um, the navigation version of this, the the landscape version of this works well in a um, sort of website navigation. So I can bring this in, and I brought the the, the fonts in as well from this design. So um, oh, nice. Yeah, using the the header fonts there for the demon hate fresh air, demons hate fresh air. So that's kind of cool as a sort of like a navigation. Uh, option uh, looks pretty good in that sort of website header and then we can also bring in the um maybe put one on the bag here using the same technique we did in that um in that concrete wall that we did earlier on we can just add a sort of blend mode to that we just try a blend mode it might not work try Oh, let's not let's not muck about too much with this but basically yeah that's that's what we could do um so yeah, i'll play around a little bit with that and make it look a little bit more um realistic okay so that's pulled through nicely now uh what else have we got instagram mock-up so we could put in just showcasing this is a really good one for showcasing that the, the logo works in a really small format mm. so um edit original let's come back here um how an instagram post might look so yeah, it's showing that the logo works in a tiny little format as a social profile handle there. Um, and would you suggest um, like looking at where they are already? Like maybe they're on Instagram, but they're not on TikTok or something. So you kind of focus on Instagram, like yeah. take some of their images that they've posted or suggest new images. If you, I guess if you're doing a rebrand, you probably That's right. want to suggest one of the some new stuff. One of the beautiful um, sort, of, sort of power of doing this is that you can go onto a client's, maybe their website, take a screenshot of their website and, and mock up the logo in their current um, branding yeah. to make sure that if they don't, they don't have the money to spend on a rebrand for a website, um, that would be an option for them. Uh, another thing you can do is to take a picture of the client wearing a t-shirt and put it on the t-shirt that they're wearing. That's a really nice touch to kind of mm. sell in a design. Now, I've got a couple of examples of that here, actually. Good segue, well done. Um, this t-shirt um, Photoshop template is one I've actually purchased because it does a really nice job of um, sort of mapping this logo to the texture of the t-shirt. You see how the wrinkles are pulling through there. So it's kind of, it, it, this, you know, when you purchase a template like, like this, it does the kind of hard work for you. So you just kind of have to save it, um, pop it in place, use a smart object and it pulls it through. Uh, you see in our panel here on the right, on the left hand side, that t-shirt icon, it's got a little exclamation point mm. because it's been modified in the background and that change hasn't pulled through. So you just press this little update link button here and that pulls that design through. Nice. Uh, now, now this, I need to talk about this one. Okay, so I found a um, stock image that I thought I might like to put this design onto because it's got a wrinkly um, t-shirt on the background. It, it was a good example of how to use a displacement filter in order to put a design into a t-shirt, but it wasn't wrinkly enough for me, this, okay? And I did a lot of searching on stock websites to try and find a more wrinkly t-shirt so that I could show you how this effect works. It wasn't wrinkly enough. So I went to AI and asked them to basically remake the same image, but pull, put more wrinkles in the background. Uh, unfortunately, I ran out of my uh, mid-journey credits halfway through, so I couldn't refine this too much. So he's got a very long neck and he's a bit uh, <laughs> of a weird shape, but it's a great, this, this um, uh, T-shirt is a great example of how this displacement filter works. So we can use this as a great um, sort of um, tutorial here. So if I edit original, just pull up this image, um, that's probably one example of, of where you know AI comes in quite handy for us as designers is making stock. Yeah, that's a really interesting photos. use case for sure. Mm. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plunk our logo in place as as pretty much just bang on um, in sort of where I want it to be in terms of ali alignment to this T-shirt. Um, if I get it like in roughly the right spot and just rotate it a little bit. Now. Um, I could use blend modes, obviously, to bring this, show the wrinkles through. Soft light's a pretty good one. It does show the wrinkles mm. through, but it's not, the design isn't like forming to those wrinkles very well. And there's a really cool way to actually do this in Photoshop. It's called, used called a displacement filter. So if I just turn this off, I'm gonna file, save a copy. And I'm gonna save this and just call this displace. Now in this file that we've just made, 
Let's just open up that displacement option. We're going to use this Photoshop file as a reference for the previous one. It's a bit clunky. You have to work in two um, Photoshop files. Um, I'm going to make this black and white, first of all. And now I'm going to use the curves panel to basically get this, um, get as much contrast in this design as I can. I want that the wrinkles in that t-shirt to be as black and white as they go. Um, and to do this, I'm just going to use the curves panel to, to treat this. I might it's not, it's doing a bit too, too much gray. So I've pulled that panel all the way over. You have to play around with this a little bit until you basically mm. get the, as, as stark a contrast as possible, uh, on that background image somewhere in the middle here. It's too gray. So I want those, those, the black and white of those wrinkles to be as absolutely white and black as possible. We'll try that. We'll try that. Okay. One other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a blur on that um, design, just an ever so slight Gaussian or Gaussian blur, or however you pronounce that. I think it's Gaussian, isn't it? Um, just to soften that design slightly, and I'm going to save that. Okay, back in our original, we can now um, get our uh, logo mark. We'll leave the soft light blend mode on that. It's pretty cool. And then using with our um, layer selected, we're going to go filter, distort, displace. Um, let's leave, I think I've done this before. So let's leave those options as they are. So the horizontal scale and vertical scale is telling the software how much it wants to warp the design based on the horizontal and the vertical axis. And we've got a lot more sort of vertical wrinkles on this t-shirt than we do the horizontal. So it's an idea to upweight the vertical uh, against the horizontal here a little bit. So I brought down the, the default values are 10, 10. So I'm just gonna bring the vertical down to five so that the vertical scale is up a little bit wrap around and press OK and it's going to ask us to, se to select that displace um, file that we made before and watch what happens. Now it's just, you see what's happened there? It's just wrinkled mm. that design wow. to the contours of that t-shirt uh, so it just looks so much more realistic than before. That's really cool. That's great. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice little feature that. So we save that back to our document and that should update. There we go. Oh, that's cool. And then one more, one more for good measure. Uh, this is an example of um, a pre-purchased um, mock-up uh, that I've that I found on a sort of a, a library website. There's a really cool because they'll they'll have a smart object already built into the design. So all you would do is double click on the smart object, drop in your design to the smart object. Um, oh, we got a horrible little. Um, transparency problem going on here with our logo it's the one that's using the um the texture we would need to sort that out in the actual logo file let's just use the um the logo mark variation for now because we know that one's good what was the Bring, issue i couldn't i couldn't see so we're, we're, in our in our illustrator file we used um a jpeg to add texture to the design in right. the badge option i hadn't i hadn't made that a vector yet uh, it was still applied uh, as an effect. Okay. So when it's right. pulling through, it's pulling through it in a weird sort of transparency, which, which is not an effect we want. So That's I'm just going to use the vectorized version that we used here with all this lovely gritty texture. Cool. Uh, press save on that smart object and then watch what happens. It pops in, so it's a bit big. Now this um, uh, Photoshop file has a sort of contour outline defined so you can see where the design um, should go so I'm going to put it above the uh, where that pocket is but underneath the drawstrings turn those contours off when I press save it'll pull it in nice Oh, so is, there it we go. Behind, and then is it sitting behind it's the... behind the draw strings that's oh, right yeah that's really cool it's just tucked in there with a little shadow and the shadow applied. yeah really yeah, adds to already it, done it. and this this mock-up is so good it has different color options for everything so you can change the color of those um draw strings um by just pressing on your you know your uh control mm. the, the library the colors inside your library or change them to something horrible like pink you know it's actually a really little powerful <laughs> mock-up Change it uh, to let's something put this horrible. back That's to not... blue. 
yeah, please don't. Nice. All right, and then save, and that's this is our light presentation. Well done. That's amazing. And how do you how do you send this to a client? Like um, you're talking yep. about, you you send it over to them. Do you export it as a PDF? Do you save it I online do. somewhere and send them a link? S to check avoid... my spelling. Put it as yeah. a PDF. Upload that to Google Drive and then send them a link to Google Drive. Yep. That way, each time when I make a change, I can then just change the PDF inside that file, and then right. they don't have to get a new link and they don't have to download anything. It's all just already on. And when they share it internally, there's like ten people in the team or a bunch exactly. of stakeholders and everything. You just make sure that it's available to everybody to see. Yeah. Now, one final thing before we we shut off. Um, let's say that we sent this off to a client and they come back and they want to change something to the design. Um, it might be changing a color, it might be a, you know, a full round of amends. The beauty of using our Adobe libraries is, is that if we want to make now make a change to um, the logo, all we have to do is double click on the actual I, the, the, the graphic inside the Adobe library, uh, make our change. Let's say they don't want eyes on our design. That's a horrible change, but all, all I have to do <laughs> is then save that inside Illustrator and watch on the libraries panel on the right, you see the eyes have now been removed from mm. that design, which means I can go back to my Photoshop file, double click inside our smart object. And you see on the right hand side there, there's a little exclamation mark there. Yep. It's telling me that, that that library graphic has changed. So I right click on it and do update all modified content, press save. And now that means that the next time I do this presentation for the client, all I have to do is change that one instance of that logo and it'll filter down through every single instance of where I've used that inside the design. That's great. So it means that I, I then don't have to, you know, re put, redo all those mockups. I just mm. relink the library graphics, change the library graphics and update them in the Photoshop files. And that change is all done. So that's yeah, great for things hugely, like, oh, we want powerful. slightly different color or can you add a little white outline to this or any sort exactly. of minor change is a minor change for you as well. Not just in the client that's size. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly right. Yep. Yep. And um, so that's it. And then amazing. Yeah. yeah go on. Yeah, and I would then obviously send that off to the client. I've got a templated email that says, here's the design. Thank you for your patience. Here's the two concepts that we worked on. Uh, click here to view your presentation. It also explains in the email why I'm not presenting in person because I found that the feedback I've got is, is much more honest and open by letting you sleep on the design for a couple of days. Now, I'm happy then obviously to get on a phone call and, and rationalize and defend any questions. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and and talk them through. I'm more than happy to do that. I'm not shy getting on the on the phone call with the client, and no one should be. These are your designs, after all. You've got to try and defend them, um, and and explain why you've gone down a certain route. And if they have questions, you can answer them on the call. But it's a really important step I found, just to let it sink in a little bit, just let them actually chew on it for a day or two. Um, actually, I, I say in my email, do not respond to me today. Don't knee jerk react to this logo. Mm. Just wait a couple of days and, and sleep on it because it's certainly part of my process is to is to do a design for my, work on a logo design for maybe an hour or two in a day, go to bed, come back the next day and I'll look at it again and go, what the hell is that? And then I'll, <laughs> I'll do it again and start again. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a huge part of the process is to actually just spend a few days and take breaks, go for a walk, have a sleep, come back to it. Uh, it totally helps the, the sort of creative process. So I encourage my clients to do the same when they're you know reviewing my logo design. That's awesome. I, I love that. Yeah, it's um, taking something that you experience and just passing it on to the client. And I do like as well that you sort of say, yeah, don't don't write back just yet. Sit on it. They probably want to share it with even friends and family members. They're like, oh, my cousin's a designer. Let's see what they think. You know, that always happens. Yeah, um, it does. It does. <laughs> don't encourage that with clients, obviously. Um, <laughs> they do it anyway. But yeah, you're right. You know, if there's people, if especially if it's a small business, they have people in their lives that are a big part of them, um, you know, yeah, starting their company trust. and they're going to want their feedback. So yeah, it's, it's important for them to get their step. Also makes them, if the, if the feedback is good, then it strengthens the um yeah. you know that whole thing and they'll, they'll feel better about it more proud of the logo exactly exactly um well that's fantastic there was just one question that came up along as we were going along um you did mention kind of purchasing a couple of um mock-ups and how it speeds it up and does all the work for you anywhere mm -hmm. particular that you might go to invest in Mock well, I'm, I'm an head. Adobe stock subscriber, oh, okay. so I have access to credit. <laughs> that was not uh, an not intentional segue. Yeah, well, sure it wasn't. Sure it wasn't. It wasn't. I didn't know. Um, there, there's a template section on, on Adobe stock. It's, that's actually a pretty good point. Um, there are a lot of um, resources, obviously. Um, Creative Market is a really good one. There's loads of free ones as well. Um, I mean, to be honest, 
I'm always looking for something really specific. Right. So I would probably um, go to a um, go go to Google and ask Google for like a a, a, mock, a PSD mockup of this specific thing. It's the best search engine in the world. It's great for that. So and then you can get order by images and find one. And it just depends who's selling it. I'll just buy it off the the next available one. Right. Yep. That's very cool. Well, hey, we are out of time, James. It has been great hanging out with you uh, yesterday and today. If you missed anything, if you want anything clarified, jump back through. We went through things in a lot of detail, so check it out if you missed part one. Um, it'll be available on YouTube and also on Behance for a, bit, for a bit as well. We'll be back next week. We have Ian Haig, and we are jumping into After Effects, and we're animating some text, so we'll be teaching you that stuff. James, where can people find nice. you uh, to follow up some of your work? Check it out. Sure. Uh, on my social channels, it's at Barnard Co., or my website is barnard.co and you'll find all my project work, all my logo examples and links to my socials at barnard.co. Excellent. Fantastic. Well, thank you. We'll see you on Adobe Live again in the future. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye. Cheers. Bye.